our first topic for this evening, uh, Douglas, I think you have the uh, XQ58 Valkyrie, if I spelled that right, artificial intelligence flight. Yeah, I've been Take trying it away. to make... Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. I missed my cue. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to make sense of this in addition to the fact that they reused the name Valkyrie, which I thought was attached to the XP-50, but anyway. 70. 70. XP-70. Yeah, thanks, Gonky. I should... I'm such a nerd. I know. I'm, a, I'm usually a better nerd than that. So this is apparently part of what they're calling the CCA program, which is... I'm seeing it as what, you, what we've been calling loyal wingmen. Does that, that sound right, Mover? Yeah, they're trying to develop yeah. drones that can fly autonomously under the supervision of crewed aircraft, and this rather vague article <laughs> seems to be referencing a big step in the development of the AI, and apparently letting it fly and verifying safety in interaction with other aircraft. Yeah, apparently it was uh, it was making like real decisions, right? S something like that. Yeah, it flew. It flew out over the Gulf. They went yeah. to the whiskeys with a strike eagle. And did a mission, and, right? By itself. Yeah, out of Eglin. They, they did. Yeah, out of Eglin. They launched it from a trailer <laughs> and then launched it. Wag, can you explain? I know you've done some AI stuff. What what have, what do you know about how these machine learning things happen? Well, most of it, uh, from my limited understanding, is taking case scenarios, one after the other, after the other, after the other, and basically looking at what works and what doesn't work, and basically positive reinforcement on what does work, and essentially building upon that, my yeah. understanding. Yeah. We uh, we did a whole thing back uh, a couple years ago. I don't know if you remember, Gonky, where I had the, the fight for honor, and then the yeah. winner got to fight the AI. Right. Yep. And... That whole thing, you know, they were doing, uh, they actually fought an F-16 guy and yep. then kicked his butt because he wasn't expecting all the stuff that it would do because it doesn't think in, you know, right. fighter pilot think. It just thinks of, here's my objective. Here's how I get to the objective. I don't care about self-preservation. I don't care about anything. I just want to, I'll shoot you in the face if I can. Yeah. And that's what they did. That's that's essentially what they did. Uh, and and so Wag I also flew the Hornet, so I don't know how that's Just much shoot different. you in the face? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is yeah, well, also, it seems like the guy really didn't have a whole lot of experience flying since to begin with either. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, that no wags, that video didn't got have the SA either. Yeah, that video got Mover some attention. <laughs> oh yeah, I sold the account on that as, one. As usual, uh, <laughs> yeah. someone was mad at me. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> but wags, you've you've kind of experienced this with DCS in the because yep. it's it's gone from. You know, very basic AI to more advanced AI. I know you guys have done some updates more recently where it's actually more advanced. Sure. I mean, how have you seen yeah. uh, the so evolution of that? So machine learning is something we're starting to look into, but it's not in there right now. Uh, more right. we have right now, which we first uh, updated a lot of the BVR and then later BFM, uh, was more based on looking at kind of more variables about the situation and be able to adapt to it. Whereas okay. before it was incredibly basic, uh, now it will, you know, more look at your own ship, look at the uh, the hostile, look at your airspeed. Do I go one circle? Do I do two circle? Do I take that over the top? You know, what's going to be my best game plan for the aircraft I'm in versus what I'm fighting? So that's more cool. what it's doing now. Whereas before it would take a two circle pretty much almost every single time and it was super predictable. I mean, yeah, that's must, not unrealistic. Must be the Air Force mm. <laughs> <laughs> must be an Air Force guy. You modeled this thing at. <laughs> yeah, uh, Wombat. We, you and I were talking a little bit before uh, with the AI and, and some of the the considerations. Do you think there's some issues with having a, an autonomous wingman out there doing its own thing? Well, you're right. We we spoke about this a little bit, and I thought about it this afternoon. And in my concern, and I think this has happened in the battle space over, I mean, decades, generations, everything, if you think about it, how war fighting was even before there were aircraft, right? It was very personal. It was one-on-one. -on -one. It was, it was, it was hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then, you know, we got weapons and then we got 
tanks and then we got aircraft and it's just getting further and further and further away from the fight to where, you know, I'm not saying that in a Hornet or Viper or, or whatever, that you're not connected to the people on the ground, but you're certainly not as connected to the people on the ground as the people on the ground. So now take this one more layer and take, I mean, we even did this with, um, you know, when we went with drones, right? So now you have guys flying these things in Vegas that aren't even, at least when we deployed, you're in a deployment mentality, right? Like you left your family or your friends or your dog or whatever it is. And you went and you were kind of locked into this mental world for as long as it was, you know, for Gonky and I, six to eight months, for Mover, six to eight minutes, whatever, you know, Air Force, Vice (laughs) Navy, but the point being, it's fine. Yeah, whatever. Monday through Friday, 10 to two, you know, I get it. But the point (laughs) being is you were still engaged in that 100%, right? And then we took, and we went to drones where you have people that literally would wake up and have breakfast with their children and then drive into work and, create pink mist somewhere on the other side of the world and come home and buy some groceries and go sleep in bed with their wife or husband or whatever. And that there were issues. I mean, that was a normal, like that's a thing in the air force where it's just a mind game. And now we're taking it one step further from that to where, you know, there's not even, I, and I'm not, listen, I'm not gonky. Like I embrace technology. Right. But you start doing this where it's not a human. I mean, I I think, okay. Fair question that none of us have talked about before. Have any of you guys ever been in an aircraft at a moment? It doesn't have to be necessarily um, combat or something where you got the hair on the back of your neck that stood up and you went, hold on, something's not right. I I need to stop this right here. It doesn't have to be dropping bombs or shooting the gun or whatever, something. Maybe it's calling a troubleshooter. Maybe it's not taking that cat shot and spinning off or something. But We've all done that, right? Every pilot's done that. And now you're taking that out of it. So that's my concern is what happens when that's not there? And it's that moment where there's that one bit of information that in our human brain, while not nearly as fast as the AI, let's be honest. I mean, I mean, some of us a lot slower, but it's that one just human interaction that makes you go, wait, then what happens? I'm not even talking about, you know, everybody brings up the stealth movie and how it turns on its own and blah, blah, blah. And yes, that is a wonderful glorified movie. And could that happen? Sure. Um, But my concern more so is that humanistic interaction of like, when does this just become, you know, machines lobbing missiles at machines. And then all of a sudden there's nothing. Yeah. No, that's a good that's, point. Like it, that's my, then it's just attrition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Correct. assembly and attrition. Now, if you're going to let me have, not me, obviously, but let me have 10 loyal wingmen that are going to go soak up missiles before I stick my nose in the fight. I am all for these, like 1,000%. Like you eat up and be the bullet sponge, and then I'll roll in behind and get all the glory. No problem. But that's the thing that kind of kind of concerns me, I guess, on where this goes. But Well, and but Wags, you've had – so we were, we were talking about the AI just now. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, the friendly AI is just as important mm-hmm. within – within the simulation. So have you like, have you found advances where it's smarter wingmen or, you know, they just do whatever and die, die with honor. Like if, have you seen the progression of having smart? Cause I've seen it in games, like just regular video games, you know, mm-hmm. you see it used to be, they were of no help. And now all of a sudden you're kind of the wingman and they're pushing the story along. I mean, how has it evolved from your perspective from the blue side? Uh, to be perfectly honest, not much on the DCS side. They're more of a critical assets, to be perfectly honest, many times. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is certainly probably once we have more of the um, uh, single ship AI really tight, yeah. um, that's when we kind of, you know, freeze in the stone. Then we kind of go on to how does it play with other AI uh, particularly because, well, whether it's BFM or even maybe more so in BVR, it's going to get a lot more complicated. Right, yeah. uh, and, and another issue, um, there's a fair amount of resources out there talking about BFM, but talking mm-hmm. about valid BVR tactics, I'm a little yeah. more concerned about. So that's actually one of the things on my agenda is to kind of you know see what's out there at a releasable form. And, you know, the other thing, too, is, you know, always in the back of our minds is, you know, making sure that a potential adversary out there is not using the product as an op for trainer against us. Yeah. Yeah. 
For sure. And that's really important. And I understand that a lot of our customers out there want the most realistic possible thing out there. In the end, it's a game. And ooh, 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 careful, Wags. Ooh, careful. Ooh, Wags. Wags is canceled. <laughs> I just uh, watched you everybody. Do not represent I just watched everybody leave or... <laughs> chat. Just I'm like glad that. nobody can see was, my face. It wasn't even something I said about. <laughs> We're all canceled. Thank you, Wags. Okay, okay. Thank you so, for that. But <laughs> okay, so here's my opinion on that. And I see this question all the time: Is it a sim or is it flight sim? It's a flight sim game. Ooh, That's what it is. I like that. You can buy it in Steam, and Steam it actually calls it. It is. Like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's a, it's a type of game. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, because it is a game, it's, there's a fine line there. We always have to be really careful that it's, you know, not used in a way we don't want it to be used. Yeah. I, I, if uh, it really is artificial intelligence and it can mm -hmm. learn, mm -hmm. could I mean, could it in theory in the game begin to see uh, ways to like take advantage of, uh, you know, yeah. performance of the missile and the shot and then on its own start making its own tactics oh, yeah just so just question. you see what i'm so, saying and then yeah. and then yeah. like so it's kind like, of oh, wait a minute so <laughs> the um the israeli company that put together the ai uh that um uh was featured in Move, movers video it's kind of what they did they just you know ran iterations over and over again figure out what kind of stuck to the wall and what didn't so you know if and when we do that type of ai development and we were to run those simulations over and over and over again yeah, there's no reason it wouldn't learn uh, in the same way as um, you know they did. So right, it's, yeah. it's valid. So, so in theory, theory, I mean, they could develop. It could come own, up on its own potentially. Yeah, right. yeah. but you guys yeah. could could limit that by just setting the parameters on the weapons and stuff. In theory. Yeah, yeah. So you know whether it's, you know the weapons or sensor, so right. what have you, um, those are essentially hard coded in there. So okay. And, and again, just like the AI, um, there's a fine line in there that, you know, do we really want to have, you know, each, you know, aircraft RCS, you know, you know, down to, right. you know, the nth degree or, you know, the WES of this missile and this parameter to be 100% accurate? No, absolutely. We do not. Right. Because, again, yeah. we have to be very careful in the mindset of how it could be used by people we don't want it to be using in that way. Well, even from a practical perspective, one of my questions would be, you know, a lot of what we do is common intensive. So mm -hmm. like ACM, yeah. for example, that's the most common intensive thing you can do. In fact, the mm -hmm. drill is just a, the calm beach ball, right? Engage, supporting, you know, all that stuff, depending on what the flavor of what weapon school is saying at the time. It's a lot of calm. And I know guys are using the, the voice chat, you know, voice attack, all that stuff. But for, for the people like me and Gonky who are just using the backspace, you know, the keyboard every now and then to try to figure it out, there is a lot of complication because it's momentary fleeting. You know, you have to recognize and then tell them something and they have to tell you something back. Mm -hmm. I mean, so from a practical standpoint, it seems like that would be one of your bigger challenges is just figuring out the comm yeah. and how to communicate from the player to the AI. Uh, that's a 100% valid uh, observation. And I don't know how you do that. Um, outside of obviously multiplayer, uh, with but an you've AI. Done it with Jester. You've <laughs> okay. done it with Jester and some, like what I'm saying in some ways, like you've got that wheel and stuff. I mean, I, it seems like there are a couple workarounds. Yeah. But the, the, the live back and forth with having to go through mm -hmm. the interface, then you're talking more about voice recognition and yeah. a very advanced AI, you know, to understand, you know, all the brevity of calm, say in a, in a BFM engagement. That's a big ask. Yeah. I'm not saying it's and not possible, but uh, not there yet. Well, then you'd have the yeah, various I worry about. accents, <laughs> language barriers, people who are trying mm. to say what they think is right, and then it doesn't work. I mean, we do that in real life. I mean, you mm. go fly. Sure. Sometimes you'll be like, what did they say? Mm. Who's engaged? Me? Him? I'm defensive. Well, and I I'm mean, dead. I remember the Double stories week. of when Gonky crossed over into the blue and just the difference of Navy to Air Force. Yes. I mean, and that's yes. two. They're 180 out. Highly literally. qualified, <laughs> yeah, highly trained. Literally. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, so to, if you can't even get that on the same page, I mean, you start introducing this and that's, I mean, start peeling yeah. that onion. That's, that's a big ask. Big time. Yeah. So. Wags, I, I got to tell you, you know, as much as we, we've, we've talked about, you know, and I, when Gonky and I have done these videos, it's never a hit against Eagle Dynamics or DCS. We think it's a great, it's a great simulator. You know, we've, we've, 
voiced things that we've noticed that are different from real life, but it's sure. not, we know there's limitations. Yep. But I will say, given the framework of what you're limited to, you guys have done a great job. I appreciate I mean, that. There's, Thank you. There's a lot, a lot. I mean, Gonky, you, you're you're the first one to go, man. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Wags, you've built the closest thing to like a time machine for me. Yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I can't go back to my 20s and 30s when I was, right. uh, you know, an active fighter pilot. I hear you. But I tell Mover all the time with the visuals. I'm like, wow, man, that looks that looks just like, you know, a join up looks just like a join up. So it's yeah. it's really cool, man.